Good morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Wehrman here coming to you with another daily devotion for Thursday morning, April 27th, 2023, using Now What? What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do by John Ragsdale. Number 10, when you don't know what to do, read the Bible. James 1.25, the truly happy people are those who carefully study God's perfect law, meaning the Bible, his word, that makes people free, and they continue to study it. They do not forget what they heard, but they obey what God's teaching says. Those who do this will be made happy. So John writes, how important is studying the Bible to you? Is it a high priority, a low priority, or no priority at all? The answer to the simple question will determine, to a surprising extent, the quality of your life and the direction of your faith. As you establish plans for your next grand adventure, you must decide whether God's word will be a bright spotlight that guides your path every day or a tiny nightlight that occasionally flickers in the dark. The decision to study the Bible or not is yours and yours alone. But make no mistake, how you choose to use your Bible will have a profound impact on you and your loved ones. George Mueller observed, the vigor of our spiritual lives will be in exact proportion to the place held by the Bible in our lives and in our thoughts, end quote. Think of it like this. The more you use your Bible, the more God will use you. Perhaps you're one of those Christians who owns a book shelf full of unread Bibles. If so, remember the old saying, a Bible in the hand is worth two in the bookcase. Or perhaps you're one of those folks who simply is too busy to find time for those for a daily dose of prayer and Bible study. If so, remember the old adage, it's hard to stumble when you're on your knees praying. God's word can be a roadmap to a place of righteousness and abundance. Make it your roadmap. God's wisdom can be a light to your guide, a light to guide your steps. Claim it as your light today, tomorrow, and every day of your life. And then walk confidently in the footsteps of God's only begotten son. So a couple of quotes on the importance of the Bible by Thomas Watson. Read the scriptures, not only as history, but as a love letter sent to you from God. Kay Arthur, I believe the reason so many are failing today is that they have not disciplined themselves to read God's word consistently, day in and day out, and to apply it to every situation in life. And Billy Graham, do you want to grow your faith? Do you want your faith to grow? Then let the Bible begin to saturate your mind and soul. Um, so you're to read 2 Timothy 3.16, 2 Peter 3.18, 1 Timothy 4.6, and Psalm 33.11 says, The counsel of the Lord, which you find in God's word, stands forever. The plans of God's heart from generation to generation. So now what? The Bible is God's roadmap for your life here on earth and for life eternal. You're never too young or too old to become a serious student of God's word. If you're not already reading your Bible every day, the appropriate time to begin is now. So again, I've talked about this, about getting study Bibles. Um, and you probably don't want the King James study Bible. Uh, you could do the new King James study Bible, or you could get a translation called the NIV New International Version study Bible or the NLT, which is the New Living Translation Study Bible. It has to say Study Bible. They're expensive, about 50 bucks, but if you find them on Amazon at a price, or maybe not on Amazon, you might be able to find them on at BAM for a lower price. Um, then uh, they've got theological notes at the bottom. I don't have a Study Bible here with me. It's at my office, but you open it up, and don't start in Genesis for the love of Pete. Good Lord, if you haven't started reading the Bible, like really reading it, start in Matthew, read the Gospels, and then read all the way through. Don't read Revelation. Bleh, not right now. It's full of a lot of apocalyptic um, symbols and meanings and sayings. And so if you really want to dig into Revelation, you should probably uh, get with a study group on that um, and get some. <laughs> There's a book called Revelation 101, Revelation for Dummies. <laughs> Book of Revelation for Dummies. So that's always a fun one to read, but it's very difficult to understand. It's really the revelation of God that God is still large and in charge and the, in the revealing of Christ, Christ coming to earth in his first advent. Um, he revealed the love of God. He revealed the invisible God, the power of God, the compassion of God, all of that. And when he returns again, he will reveal the judgment of God and um, defeat uh, sin and defeat evil on earth. He's already defeated evil. 
but evil gets to have its way for a little while longer till everyone comes to know God through, you know, till everyone comes to know Christ through God. That's why he tarries. That's why it takes so long to return. So yeah, read your Bible. And sometimes there's online Bible studies you can do. I think um, the Bible app has some really good online Bible studies. Um, uh, but get a study Bible of your own and make it a point to, and you know, like the upper room study, you know, the upper rooms, the little ones that I read out of sometimes, that will get you to read the Bible in a year, but it starts in Genesis. So if you, if you're familiar with the Bible, you can start in Genesis, but when you get to Leviticus and all the laws and you get to numbers and all the laws, and then when you read, um, the Kings, and then you read the Chronicles, it sounds like it's repeating because it is. So first and second Kings are about all the Kings that ruled Israel at the time and all the bad Kings that were enemies to them. And then Chronicles is the Kings chronicling, chronicling, is that word? Writing down what happened. So you're going to see a lot of um, reviews. Same with um, Exodus and Deuteronomy and Numbers. You're going to hear a lot of review, but you know, it had been a generation later, so the writers, um, Moses's probably counterparts had to, um, and the priests had to rewrite, not rewrite, but they had to introduce again what Moses had already written before in um, Exodus. So sometimes we need a repeat version because we don't remember. So start in the New Testament, start with the Gospels. I like the Gospel of John, but you can start with Matthew and don't get freaked out because of all the lineage. It's just showing you that Jesus comes from the line of David. Um, and I'm going to talk about that this Sunday. We're going to talk about uh, the book of Ruth. And really, it's a story about Naomi. Yeah, there's famous quotes in the book of Ruth about Ruth saying to Naomi, I will follow you uh, where you go. I will go with you. Your God will be my God and I will stay with you because she was a pagan Moabite. And Naomi was going back to her homeland, leaving Moab and um, going back to um, Bethlehem or Judah because um, she had heard there was food there because it was a big famine. Anyway, the story is about Naomi and what we're going to talk about is when God doesn't make sense because Naomi lost her husband and her two sons to famine and um, yeah. So even in the midst of her grief and her anger and she called and said, don't call me Naomi, which means sweet something. Call me, I think it was Marta which means bitterness, because she was bitter. But even in her bitterness, her grief, and her anger, God was still um, intervening. So I'm going to talk about a divine interception. And we may watch some football. Hope I don't get dinged for copyright. I'm just going to show the little short <laughs> of some interceptions. Won't that be fun? That even in the grief and in the time of um, uncertainty and struggling, we still grieve. We still doubt. We still are angry at God. And sometimes we blame God. Um, but God still divinely in charge and he will um, give you that timeout interception hello still here no follow me this way especially if we're going in the wrong direction so um yeah that's all I know so that's a Sunday at nine we're going to continue to deep clean our hearts and try to figure out what to do when God doesn't make sense and a lot of times God doesn't make sense because his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and a lot of times we find ourselves, you know, going against what God, you know, if God has something in your life and you just decide you're going to ignore it, well, don't expect good things to happen. <laughs> so, in fact, expect things that will probably bring you back to God. Not that God sends them, but he may allow them. Because remember, Naomi and her husband went to Moab out of leaving Bethlehem because there was no food in a fam. There was a famine. There was no food in Bethlehem which literally means a house of bread. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? So they went to Moab and they stayed there 10 years. Naomi could have said to her husband before he died or even after he died, okay, kids, we're leaving because God had shunned the Moabites because they uh, worship Baal, which is a God that sacrificed children, made, you know, wanted blood. He was, I think it was Baal or was it Molach, Molash? I'll have to, I, I don't know. It's one of those pagan gods that wanted blood known as the destroyer. So we're going to talk about, you know, that wasn't probably a good move for um, Naomi's husband, but they were starving. So you could see him wanting to leave. That's not a problem. But he went into enemy territory and he stayed there. So when you're in enemy territory, 
and the Israelites hated the Moabites. The Moabites hated the Israelites. Something was going to happen. So I don't know if they died of famine or they died of a Moabite killing them, you know, whatever. So I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, that's a Sunday at 9 a.m. So when you don't know what else to do, read your Bible. And you can read your Bible with a study Bible. And then read Bibles uh, with devotions because you get scripture, but just in little snippets. So what I would suggest is if you have time to read a chapter, one chapter a day, um, or even a half a chapter a day, starting in the um, New Testament with Matthew, get past the lineage. That's just the lineage of where Jesus came from to fulfill scripture, um, to fulfill a prophecy from a long time ago, um, and then get into it. And it will talk about the birth of Jesus, life of Jesus, um, how Jesus revealed the, reveals the invisible God. When he was here, that's what his job was, to preach um, the kingdom of heaven. That's why he said he came, and to reveal what the kingdom of heaven is like, and he is the kingdom of heaven. And then also, of course, to die on a cross and be resurrected to defeat sin and death. So take a look at it, read it, and then get some Bible through um, devotions or um, a small group. I would suggest getting into a small group too. So pray to God to lead you somewhere there. Maybe even an online one. All right, that's all I know. So let's pray out um, about how important and what a gift the Word of God is. So Lord, we thank you for your gift, the Word. And we thank you that believers in Jesus have the power of the Holy Spirit to lead them and guide them as they read the Word. So a lot of people want to read so that they can memorize things and know stuff and be smart. But you tell us to read it because it's food for our soul. We may not remember what we're reading and we may not even quite understand it, even with those theological notes but we know that it's feeding our souls and one day we will understand it. So we thank you for your word. May we use it and read it and live it. Amen. Okay. I hope you have a good day. Enjoy the sunshine. It's supposed to be nice. I'll see you Sunday at 9 a.m. right here, live stream or in person. Love to see you. Wear your jeans. Bring your coffee. Bye-bye.